legendary Assyrian goddess that dates back as far as 1000 BC, greatly known for her beauty and association with the moon, water, and fertility. She is notably deemed as the very first mermaid. I'm talking about none other than Etagardus, the inspiration for today's sculpture and my way of celebrating things that take place in the month of May. Hello there friend, join me on my process on how I created her. Happy May, or Mermaid in this case. As with all my sculptures, I start by making the armature. With the addition of this flimsy thin wire, it will help give me flexibility to her tail fin. Just going to quickly add this first layer down to cover most of the body. Now coming in with cost clay medium for the fish tail. This is a special polymer clay that stays flexible after baking, allowing me to bend and repose the tail later if I need to. Now to bulk out and define her facial features. Like with most mermaids, their backstory and origins are often tragic and sad. Atagardus is no different. According to myth, the divine goddess fell in love with a mortal shepherd named Hadad. Together, they had a daughter named Semiramis, later becoming the queen of Assyria and known for creating the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Tragedy came when Atagardus accidentally caused the death of Hadad. Most accounts are vague or never mention at all how she caused it. It's assumed, or what I speculate, is that he didn't survive after intercourse. Filled with shame and not being able to live with her guilt, she threw herself into a lake. Her beauty was so great that other gods took pity and transformed her into a fish from the waist down. Or the water itself, not wanting to hide her beauty, thus changing her into a mermaid, depending on the source. This was the earliest account of a mermaid legend ever told. It's not hard to see how this myth provided the inspiration for many other mermaid stories that followed after. At this point, I'm about done bulking out the body, moving on to making the hands. Stuff like ears, hands, and feet were always things I struggled with sculpting and even drawing. They are my least favorite things to create, but still very important to work on regardless. With the hands done, now we can attach. Putting this aside, I'll make two more fins that will be attached to her hips. First by taping both sides together, I'll quickly draw out a general shape that I want. With this flimsy wire, I will add some structure. Time to cover them with clay and connect them to the body after. I made two sets thinking I'll use them all, but ended up settling on the larger pair that I made. The rest of the sculpt, I'll be going back to using cost clay again. To save time and consistency, I'll be using these circle cutters to make the scales, in various sizes. Excuse me while I make all these scales in bulk batches. Now that I have my scales, I can start attaching, starting out small and then gradually getting into the bigger scales. 
this is very time consuming, but I just love the end result doing it this way. I realized I should have textured my fins when adding the first layer of clay. To fix this, I'll add a super thin layer of clay and add the textures in. With my extruder, I'll make the bony lines that make up the fins as well. With this old sewing needle, I can add all the tiny lines to the fins. Finally, I can move on to making the hair. It has been said that Atagardas had long flowing locks, like that of water. And that's what we're gonna do. This will be a very delicate process. I'm laying down some parchment paper to help with moving this to the oven when I do my final bake. Not to crank out many long strands of clay. Once I collectively separate them into smaller bundles, I can start attaching. I will again be working in layers. The legend of Atticardus has traveled all around, even making its way to Greece, Rome, and the British Isles. A big golden statue and temple was made in her honor in the city of Ascalon. Her worshippers had to swim through a pool to get into the altar at this temple. Sacred animals to Atticardus were doves and fishes representing love and fertility. According to ancient Greek myth, Atticardus was connected to the star sign Pisces, which makes sense since the symbol for Pisces is of two fishes. Alrighty, moment of truth. I cannot believe how well it's holding up. And just like that, a brief sigh of relief quickly turns to dread, realizing I will have to paint all of this now. Uh, son of a- I will start by doing the hardest part and paint the hair first. Base color will be black, and going back later with a brown highlight. Switching to the second hardest part, and paint the upper body. Just gotta take my time doing this, so I'll have less touch-ups to do later. Now going back in with the brown highlights. Same thing for the upper body and mixing up a lighter highlight for the skin. I can finally move on to the more fun part of this by adding some warmth to her skin tone with washes of pinks and reds. Moving on now to the lower body, base coating everything with this dark blue. I really wanted to do something different from my previous mermaid sculpture, so I'm doing this sporadic color pattern with the scales, shifting between various greens and some gold touches. As for the fins, base coating with this dark green first, and later doing a gradient blend with a lighter green.
plus some more gold touches, because why not? After sealing everything with a glossy varnish, it's time to assemble. Now this is good as done at this point, but this is the perfect opportunity to use some deep pour resin. After laying cure for about 2 days, I can now demold. I attempted to demold earlier and it didn't fully cure. Because of my impatience and dumb mistake, I had some flaws develop in the resin. Not to worry, I could fix that. I got this round wooden board that I'll use as my base. Also the colored resin turned out to be much lighter than I had wanted it to. So painting this board with various shades of green is going to really pop nicely when it's all put together. Lastly. Finishing this off with some Mod Podge. Just gonna let this dry for a bit, but let's get right to the final look. This has been one of the most daunting but rewarding projects by far. I really want to improve upon my previous mermaid project. Also, fun fact, if you're somewhat of an art nerd like me, you can see I was inspired by the famous Ophelia painting by John Everett Millay. I figured the mood and composition of this painting would complement well with Atagardis and my portrayal of her. But that's just me. I would love to know your thoughts on my take on Atagardis. Would you like to see more mermaids in my future projects as well? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more art related projects like this in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next one.